And then she doesn't remember anything because she woke up on the couch with a migraine. <laughs> migraine. Ah, hangover. Let me try this again. Okay, so the final book this month, I read on my Kindle, and this was for the Busy Ladies Reading, the Busy Ladies, oh my God. Sure, have another drink, Barry. <laughs> friends it's Mary the mom from a girl a book and a mom and this is part one of my May reading wrap-up because I read 20 20 books in May this is what happens when school is out and I have nothing more that I want to do than just read and escape I guess the final month of teaching uh, this year. So uh, anyway, so part one is all of the books that I read uh, for readathons or because somebody told me to sort of like prompts. We'll go with that. Uh, so uh, let's start with the Asian readathon. Um, which is started by Cindy at with Cindy, uh, who I have to admit, I don't watch all that often, uh, but, uh, she's interesting. And so, uh, I heard about this and I thought, what a great idea. So there were five prompts and let's go through them. The first prompt was, um, a nonfiction book written by an Asian author, um, and so this one I listened to on audiobook. I'll put it right up here. It was Eat a Peach by David Chang. And I gave it four stars because it was really, uh, really interesting. Really. I mean, the he is a celebrity chef. He's um, the chef of... Um, Momofuku and uh, he talked about his beginnings and his struggles with mental illness which is important um, and so I really enjoyed this um, at some points though his tone was very apologetic when he didn't need to be so that's why I only gave it a four star but overall I really recommended it I really recommend it it was um, very, very interesting if you've ever been interested in uh, becoming a chef or if you have ever struggled or know somebody else who struggled with mental illness. So that was four stars. And um, part of the Asian readathon is to get different, um, different types of Asian. So uh, David Chang is Korean. So that's my Korean book. Um, the second Asian readathon prompt was not U.S. centric, and um, so this one has to be my favorite book of the month. It was, um, yes, it was a beautiful little book. It's called um, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, and I listened to this one on audiobook too because I may have been done with graduate school, but I still had that really great commute so um two hours a day driving to work it's, it's a commute um so anyway this was before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi and it was japanese so it was not u.s centric and it's the story of a cafe in japan where um time travel is possible there's a one chair that will send you back uh, to the past to meet someone who has already come into the cafe and there are a lot of rules and um, nothing you do will change the present and it was delightful I so very much enjoyed this book it um, 
it gave a quiet feeling to it um and i guess they did that by smaller not necessarily smaller sentences but it was really to the point and you could tell that the way the writing was crafted was such that it didn't have extraneous words or overly long descriptors that sometimes are great like uh jane eyre read jane eyre this month lots of descriptors it's not a calm and purposeful sort of writing so i completely enjoyed this it was a five-star read for me the next in my asian readathon the next prompt was an asian protagonist and this one uh the ethnicity was chinese and the book is called chemistry by Waiki Wang. Um, God, I hope I pronounced that right. I meant to look it up and I forgot. Um, this, I didn't really enjoy this so much. It was, um, I gave it a three star. I mean, it was fine. Um, but it was stream of consciousness and I didn't, I have a hard time with stream of consciousness because I like to know the facts. I like to know what's happening. And so stream of consciousness is not necessarily the thing I like the most. I also had expected it to be something completely different than what it was. Um, I'm not sure what I expected it to be, but it was, it was fine. It was good. It was a, it was a three star for me. Um, and then there are five prompts. Uh, the next in the Asian readathon prompt was written by an Asian author in a favorite genre. And that's kind of hard because I'm kind of like, God, I read all kinds of genres. But I decided to go with um, like a romance adventure, not necessarily a mystery, but there is a dead body. Um, and the the ethnicity is Indonesian and this one is called Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutano, Sutanto and I love this book. I read it in like, I don't even know, like a day. It might have been a day and a half. Uh, but like the book starts out introducing the main character who's a photographer and her um, mother and her aunts. And um, her mother is a florist. Her uh, first aunt, I think, is a caterer, like a wedding caterer. Her next, another second aunt, I believe, is a makeup hairdresser and uh, the fourth aunt, because her mother was third, uh, I think. Fourth aunt is like a wedding singer. So they have this wedding business. And um, her mom sets her up on a blind date. And uh, she accidentally kills him. And uh, when I heard that, I was like, how do you accidentally kill somebody? But uh, she does. She accidentally kills him. And... Um, and then her family decides they're going to help her get rid of the body. And, uh, and it is just hilarious and action packed. And, uh, there's romance and, um, and the dead body ends up coming to, uh, this lavish millionaire wedding. There's a bit of, uh, lesbian interaction it's uh it's an it's a hilarious book it is um super fun and like i said it was it was just so delightful that i i spent a lot of time well into the night reading this book and uh it was fantastic i gave it five stars um and the final uh asian readathon is one written by an asian author and this book uh, the ethnicity was Indian. Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. And 
I didn't like it. It was a two star for me. And I was really surprised because um, it was uh, long listed for the women's prize. I think it was short listed for the Booker Prize. Um, and it's about a complicated mother-daughter relationship, which I always find complicated mother-daughter relationships interesting to read about. Also, um, the mother has started forgetting things and she, uh, I believe, I don't think it's ever really mentioned, but I believe it's like early onset Alzheimer's, um, which is also something that I really enjoy reading about. Uh, but this one fell flat. I could not get invested in either the mother or the daughter. Uh, the daughter didn't seem to have emotions. Like, like, um, yeah, like she didn't, she didn't have an emotion. She was very cold, very detached. Wasn't a fan. Two star. Which was surprising because, you know, oh, this is supposed to be, you know, one of the 20 best books uh, written by uh, women that are, like, creative and exciting. And, yeah, no, I did not find this book any of that. And I was really disappointed. Um, okay, so next, I, I read, um, okay, of those five books... Um, all of them were audiobooks except, um, Dial A for Antis, which I did on the Kindle. Okay. Ooh, didn't mean to slam that. Sorry. Now it's time for the, the beverage of the night. This is a Campari and soda. It's, uh, refreshing. It's uh, a little bit bitter. It's definitely not a kid drink. Uh, by a kid drink, I mean like a, like a young college student uh, who like the sweet drinks. It's uh, it's much more of a mature taste, uh, but it's delicious and perfectly refreshing for the nice warm day that it was today. Although it was a beautiful day, really. Okay, moving on. My woke book for the month is Ta-Nehisi Coates, Between the World and Me. Um, this is written similarly to uh, James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time. It's about... Well, it's a letter to his son of sorts. It's um, it's written in three parts. And um, I found this one especially useful because um, I think I might be just a little older than Ta-Nehisi Coates. Um, yeah, I think I'm just a little older than him. I don't, I don't think we're the same age, but we could be. Um, but he mentions a lot of things in the 90s and the 80s that I have remembrances of. Um, and it was really interesting to see uh, these things through the eyes of a person living in Baltimore in the inner city. Um, there were a lot of, uh, well, I already said that. Um, there were a lot of allusions that he uses and he uses some slang that I, I don't know. Um, so I think this is a really important book uh, that it was really eye-opening to me to see uh, the same things, sort of. I mean, I grew up white and privileged and suburban um, I, from a different point of view and it, it really hammered home to me the idea that, um, how much I as a white woman 
take for granted that my daughter, uh, the girl, will grow to maturity. That, like, in my head, I imagine weddings and grandchildren. And, um, and I don't think I'm alone as a white person in thinking this, but uh, the thing that I probably will take most from this is that uh, that sense of security and safety for a person in a black body isn't a given. And um, I, I found that a little, a little horrifying. And um, this book took me, even though it's like a short little book, it took me all month to read because I really wanted to digest what he was telling me. Um, I think this is an, an incredibly important book. Um, I really like his writing and I really feel that it wasn't necessarily written for white people, um, which is okay. Uh, but I, I feel that white people should read this, um, and maybe sit with it for a minute. It certainly made me uncomfortable um, but I think that was good. And this one I gave a five stars to also because it was really good. I also liked, um, unlike James Baldwin and The Fire Next Time, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates has like pictures in here. And of course, of course, when I want to see them. Okay. So like there's pictures. And so you get to to realize that this is a real person, that this is not some fictional account of what maybe, no, this is a real person and this is his story. And I love that the pictures are in here because you get more, even though you don't always know who the pictures are, uh, you get more of um, the reality of it, which I think is brilliant. So super highly recommend that. All right. And the, Nope, not the final. Uh, the next book I read was the Buzzword Readathon book. Um, the prompt this month is House or Home. And so I picked The Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne. Um, yeah, the Winnie the Pooh guy. Um, right on my Kindle. And this was delightful. It, um, it just was so fun. It was... Um, very old school mystery. There's, there wasn't any scandal besides the mystery and there were secret passages and, uh, a nod to Sherlock Holmes and, uh, it was almost Agatha Christie-esque. Um, but it was, it was delightful and I've read all the Winnie the Pooh books, um, or the Winnie the Pooh book, um, and I was surprised to discover that A.A. Uh, a. Milne was actually a well-known writer and playwright before Winnie the Pooh, um, and he wrote Winnie the Pooh for his uh, son, Christopher Robin. I'm not even making that up. Uh, so the Red House Mystery was, oh, so much fun, and uh, I did not figure out who did it until the end, and so that was a five star, and then... The final book this month I read on my Kindle uh, for the Busy Ladies Read Book Club, uh, which is the book club that me and my sister and my mother and some other friends are in. And the book this month was The Pocket Wife by Susan H. Crawford. And um, it was really good. It was the story of this woman who goes over to her friend's house for drinks. And uh, she stumbles back home and falls asleep on the couch, drank too much to remember, wakes up with a hangover, and is getting her purse out of the car when she sees um, emergency vehicles at her friend's house and her friend is dead. And she, of course, doesn't remember. So the whole story, I should mention, the woman is bipolar. And she's in the beginning of a manic episode. And none of this is anything that you wouldn't find out in the first chapter. 
but uh this book is fantastic uh it it it's supposed to be an unreliable narrator so i guess it's an unreliable narrator and uh because she was drunk and she's manic and um it really deals with um mental health and uh the viewpoint of someone struggling with mental health and uh yeah it's good um and there are twists and um yeah it kept me guessing and um my sister and i would have um text arguments about whether or not this is happening is this not happening uh so that was wonderful and um i totally didn't guess the ending so five stars for that one and uh part two will be coming out soon okay great see you then happy reading